Good afternoon, dear friends. We are gathered to celebrate God's love. In this Mass, we will be offering thanks to God on the 100th anniversary of St. John Paul and ask his prayers for our church and for all of God's children around the world. We also pray for those who have asked our prayers. We will remember to pray for for John, for James, and for Margaret Lee, who have asked her prayers. Also, we'll offer prayers for John Fernandez, who is battling coronavirus. We pray and ask for God's healing. We pray for those who have died. Pray and ask for God's um, forgiveness and mercy. And also pray for their loved ones and families, for God's comfort and strength and grace. I'd like to pray for families, especially families that are just struggling to provide food or shelter at this time. Pray that God may be with them in their struggle and that God may um, send someone, you know, to bring them some help and some support. So I'd like to pray for homeless people at this time. Pray for seniors. Pray for children in foster care. Pray for prisoners. Pray for those in society that are often forgotten. May God help us to be there for them. And finally, I'd like to invite you to bring your own intentions together and let us pray. Let us pray and ask God to bless us. Pray and ask God to help us. Pray and ask God to give us his mercy. For our opening hymn, we will sing a song, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, uh, today we celebrate the 100th anniversary of St. John Paul II. In this Mass, we pray and ask his intervention, especially for us at a time like this, that his Peace may be with the Pope, be with our bishops, be with our priests, and be with all those who minister to God's people. And that his patronage may be with every one of you. He loved every one of God's children. And that that, might, that love may be felt um, today as we offer thanks for him. We also pray for other intentions and ask you to bring your intentions to God's altar. Let us now confess our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. Dear 
you were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant a merciful God that we may experience at all times the fruit produced by the pastoral observances through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. We set sail from Troas making a straight, a straight run from Samothrace, and on the next day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, a leading city in that district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We spent some time in that city. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate along the river where we thought there would be a place of prayer. We sat and spoke with the women who had gathered there. One of them, a woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth from the city of Thyatira, a worshiper of God, listened, and the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what Paul was saying. After she and her household had been baptized, she offered us an invitation. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed on us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalmist, the Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. The Lord delights in his people. Let them praise his name with festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people, and he adorns his lowly with victory. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of his faithful. The Lord takes delight in his people. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The spirit of truth will testify to me, says the Lord. And you also will testify. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father. He will testify to me, and you also testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have told you this so that you may not fall away. They will expel you from the synagogues. In fact, the hour is coming when everyone who kills you will think he is offering worship to God. They will do this because they have not known neither the Father or me. I've told you this so that when that hour comes, you may remember what I told you. The word of the, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, today I'm going to uh, quickly say two things reflect with you on two points that stand out to me in these readings. There are several. But the first comes from something I normally would say 
to you every day when we gather that you are the delight of the Almighty God. I can always tell you that's not me saying, that's God's word saying that you are the delight of the Almighty God. Now, the word delight could be either used as a verb or as a noun. To delight in means to be charmed by, to be enchanted and, and totally captivated by whatever it is, a spectacle, a person, a thing, whatever it is, charms you, just catches your attention, your attention wraps you completely, you know, and sometimes you lose yourself. Just imagine the last time you were maybe at a movie that was so exciting, that captured your attention and you forgot where you were because you were just so enwrapped or watching a game or even eating ice cream or something that you, you take pleasure in. It is that kind of feeling of delight that the Lord says, says the Lord takes delight in his people. Uh, it, it is also um, a sense of real pleasure, a strong sense of one intense sense of real pleasure and happiness and satisfaction in somebody, in what they do, or, or something else. So when scripture says the Lord takes delight in his people, it's like the Lord has this strong and intense sense of pleasure in you, of delight in you, of happiness about you and of you, and of satisfaction with you and with me. That is very consoling and very comforting. And it's not because of anything we have done. It's not because somehow you, have, you are this super outstanding person or I am this super outstanding person. No, no, no. He delights in you because I am his. And he delights in you because you are his. To, to, to get a better sense of what it means to take delight and what the Lord feels every day he looks at you and looks at me. Now, I know the devil wants us to feel that God is out there just judging and condemning us and waiting to kill us or burn, or burn us in, in flames. Yeah, but that's why the devil is called the accuser. He wants you to believe what God did not say. Just think about the last time you took your grandson or your granddaughter to the, to the park and you sat down and just watched your grandchild play with her friends and how that made you feel. Just watch your grandchild be happy and just enjoy being with her friends and just having fun. Just imagine how that made you happy just watching your child be a child and be herself or be himself and just do the things that delight her. That's how God sits down every day, watching you, watching me, and taking delight in us. He takes delight in you right now, right here. That's a feeling that God has. It's a feeling that allows us freely go to God in prayer, not fearing that we are judged, not fearing that we will be condemned, not fearing that we will be smacked or spanked, but believing that we will be embraced. We will be suited, healed, nurtured, tolerated, and blessed because God delights in you. He delights in me. Scripture even goes on in that same text. It says, let us praise his name in festive dance. Let them sing to him with timbrel and harp, for the Lord loves his people. He adorns the lowly with victory, for the Lord loves his people. I know there are so many who find it hard to feel, to relate to God's love, because we are so caught up with physical, physicalness. So if something is not physical, you know, um, I, I can't relate to it. So I cannot relate to what it means that God loves me. Look around the many blessings that you did not work for. 
a wall that you did not build and begin to see everything that shows God's greatness and all of that was built for you or for me. You might begin to feel little by little the love of God in everything that he has done for us. Things that we could never pay for. Just imagine the gift of oxygen for free. I'm thinking if we had to pay for oxygen as we pay for light bills, wow, no one would be able to pay for it. If we had to pay for light, you know how expensive it is to keep your light burning. If we had to pay for natural light that God gives us, the rain and everything that he gives us, there's no way you and I would be able to pay for it. These things are given to us free. If we had to rent our parents to raise us and to give us life, it's impossible. There is none of this we would be able to do. They are God's gift because he loves and delights in you. You. Call your name. That's you. That's the first thing I want us to think about today. The second thing I want us to think about uh, comes from the gospel reading. Now, the Lord Jesus is already making reference to the spirit, his spirit, that is going to be sent to us. I, I have known any number of Christians who, um, who have claimed, and I, I don't doubt their claim, their claim is valid, that they are moved by the Holy Spirit, that they are filled with the Holy Spirit, that their actions, their words, their conducts, their lives are all led by the Spirit. I don't doubt that. I don't have the, uh, the, the, I don't have the position or the know-how, the knowledge enough to know if that's true or not. So I will take that for granted that they are right, that they are filled, led, moved by the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit, by the Spirit. However, today, the Lord tells us how we can self-evaluate whether my actions or your actions, whether my words or your words, whether the way you, you act and behave is led by the Holy Spirit or is led by some spirit. Because the apostle tells us we must test every spirit. And so today, Jesus is going to give us, the Lord is going to give us, you know, a measurement, measurement scale on which to test our actions, our lives, and everything that we do, whether or not that is, or whether or not we are moved, motivated, we are inspired, we are led by the Holy Spirit, or maybe led by some spirit, some nameless spirit. The Lord said, when the advocate comes, whom the Father will send in my name, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify to me. I'd like us to focus on those words. He will testify to me. Now, this is what the Lord is saying. That the Holy Spirit who is coming, it is not coming with a new evangelization that is so deep, that is different, totally different from the one that Jesus preached. He is not coming with a new teaching different from the one that Jesus left us. He is not coming with anything else different from what the Lord left for the left with the disciples and taught the disciples and left us in Scripture. He will come and testify to exactly that means there will be consistency in the life of Jesus and with what the Spirit will do. What that means is that if what I do does not sync or line up with the teachings of Christ, then I must have to question what Spirit is leading me. You, must, you may have to question what Spirit is leading you. Because there are times we feel something but we must first identify what it is that is the source of our feeling. The Lord lays clear. Whenever the church is doing something that does not line up with what Jesus taught us, the church is at that moment not led by the Holy Spirit. Yes, maybe led by some spirit, but definitely not led by the Holy Spirit. Because the Lord says, 
the spirit cannot come and ask you to do something else that is not consistent with my teaching, that is not consistent with the model I laid for you, that is not consistent with how I want my believers to behave. When the spirit that moves you or moves me teaches me something that is contrary to what the Lord has said, then that's time to stop and question. Ask that spirit, what is your name? I doubt if he is going to tell you that he is the Holy Spirit of God. Yes, he may have a name, but definitely not the advocate, not the paraclete who travels and walks with us and accompanies us. There is definitely a spirit speaking to you or me at such moments or the church at such moments, but not the Holy Spirit. And the Lord goes on, he says, and you also will testify. That means you and I must all would also testify and behave. And our behavior must be consistent with the teaching of Christ. Not some of our teaching that is contrary or completely in opposition to what Jesus, the Lord, taught us. So dear friends, during this moment where we celebrate the 100th anniversary of Pope John Paul or St. John Paul II, we pray that like him, we may line our lives, lay our lives, and align ourselves to the teaching of Christ, to the, to the, the doctrine and the way of life left us by Christ, and, and not something else. The God who has given us such great examples also help us to model our lives according to these examples. As always, I'd like to remind you that you are still the delight of the Almighty God. God loves you very much. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we just want to thank you for everything that you do. We ask you today, O oh God, as we celebrate the 100th anniversary of St. John Paul, that you may hear his prayers for Pope Francis, hear his prayers for our bishops, hear his prayers for all our priests, our deacons, our religious men and women, Lead us for other churches and world religions that he sought so hard to bring together under one umbrella, Christ, the Good Shepherd. That we may constantly work together to build the family of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our homeless. Pray for seniors. Pray for prisoners. Pray for children in foster care. Pray especially for those who are in more greater danger at this time. Pray, God, that you may protect them and shield them from harm and danger, that you may keep them safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I pray for John Fernandez, who is battling this virus. I pray for James, for John, and for Margaret Lee, who are struggling together as a family at this time. I pray for those who celebrate today for, as their birthdays or anniversaries. That God may bless them in every good way. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I offer your intentions and your prayers and bring all of your other cares and concerns before God our Father and ask that Pope, Pope John Paul II may intercede for the intentions that will bring from this altar to God today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our blessed mother to intercede for us as we say, Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our lives, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of our womb, Jesus. O clement, so loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Amen. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her great cause, you have given her cause for such great gladness. Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruits in perpetual happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is to the right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, that in this time above all to love yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, they brought to the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave each disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the third acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Save us, Lord, Save us, Savior of the world, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray using the words our Lord gave us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant heart, peace, and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of that peace. And so from me to you at this time, I send you God's peace. May his peace find you, rest with you, and forever abide with you. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be clean. Let us offer a moment of invitation to the Lord to bring us his body spiritually in this moment of spiritual communion. Gracious God, you are ever present. You don't need to traverse spaces because you can be anywhere and everywhere at the same time. And so as we worship you right now, O God, we ask that you may be everywhere, that your children are gathered right now, that you may minister to their needs, O God, that they may be able to receive your body and your blood, do differently spiritually, that the effect may nevertheless be felt in their lives and in their souls and in their homes. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Together now, let us say the prayer to St. Michael, the Archangel. St. Michael, the Archangel. Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits that wander through the world seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for for joining us at this mass and for worshiping God with us at this time. I continue to pray for you and ask that you pray for me and that together we will keep this community alive until all of this is over. So always never forget, the Bible just reminded us that you and I are the delight of the Almighty God. 
not for anything we have done, but just because God chooses to delight in us anyway. And the devil is jealous of that. He is jealous that God delights in you and delights in you. He tries to make sure he gets in the way. But thank God for the Holy Spirit, the paraclete that God has given to us. So always stay in the love of God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our closing hymn, we will sing a song to our Blessed Mother. Mark you, Lord Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Of the only of the Maria, of the of the Maria, heaven the blessed, your glory proclaim on earth. We your children invoke your fanim. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria.